Welcome to Project Time with Preston. Today's project is to replace the fluorescent tube light in this closet with this LED light fixture. Now, the LED light fixture is uh, a, well, it got a 4000K light, which means it's, it's whitish, but not super white. The 6500K would be really, really white and a 3000K would be fairly yellowish. And it's a 20 watt fixture, which is the same as the fluorescent light that I'm removing, uh, which is also uh, two feet long, same as this, actually 20 inches. So this light is, as you can see, very light and simple. Uh, not much to it. Uh, one of the important things is to note there's no place in the back for wire nuts and to make the electrical connection, which is different with the LED, with the fluorescent tube where there's a metal box at the back that has all the wiring connections. Also, this wire is very short on this particular fixture, which limits uh, our ability to play around with positioning and such. Uh, it would be better if they had added another six inches or so of wire. It would really help uh, give more flexibility in how to install it. Also, as you can see, these are really tiny, tiny wires on the ends. Um, smaller than most um, like holiday light wires. So this is not a very uh, well-made light fixture, but uh, it is what it is, and uh, it should still do the job. Before getting started, I've made sure I have all my tools ready. Uh, I may need a drill, uh, some screwdrivers, a voltage tester, and because I may have to adjust the wiring slightly, I've got uh, wire strippers, uh, I've got a box to put in the wall with uh, a drywall saw, which I may use, a level. Uh, if I end up cutting the drywall, I've got a drop cloth, a vacuum cleaner, and of course, I always need light. The first step will be to remove the existing fixture. I've switched off at the wall outlet, so it should be safe. And I've got a light here, so we're good to go. Okay, now to remove the bulb, very simple, you just rotate the tube and the bulb pops out. Now we need to get this cover off the front of the fixture. It kind of snaps on there and we're going to force it off. I'm not going to worry too much about possibly breaking it because we're getting rid of all of it. It appears to be a little stuck a bit to the label here on the ballast, but it came right off. Before I disconnect this, I want to make sure the wires really are dead from the switch. I once was shocked using a uh, working on a switched outlet that was off, and I don't know if it was miswired or what, but we always want to double check. So I'm going to switch the switch on to make sure my voltage tester is getting a good reading. Yep, the black wire is definitely hot. And I switch the light off. Nothing. We're good to go. Just unscrew the wire nuts and put the wire nut back on the one that's coming out of the wall. Same with the neutral. Just in case, put it on the one that's coming out of the wall. This is now safe. Now I see one, two, three, four, five, six screws in here. That is crazy. All right, so the first screw I'm going to take out is the one that's got the ground around it. The 
this would be faster if I used a drill with a screw bit, but I like doing it by hand. straight and it lifts right up over the wires there we go now that I have the light down I have two options for mounting the new LED light I can either uh, take the electronics out of the box that the fluorescent tube was mounted on and uh, attach the light onto that box so that I have something to put all of this wiring into or I can cut a hole in the drywall and mount this box in the hole and use that for uh, attaching all the wiring and then I'll have a nice flush mount. So I'd like to do that but I need to see if I can figure out in here where exactly the uh, wood is so that I know that I actually have a good space for attaching the box. If I look closely here, I can see in that hole the bottom uh, or the top of a 2x4. So that hole is right at the base of a 2x4. And I can poke in with a drill bit and feel that it's empty to the left and to the right. So I've if I put the box right on top of this 2x4 here, I should be good. And I can feel the wiring is coming from this direction. So if I put the box right here, the wiring should fit in and I should be good. Also, I see a little crack here. Yep, Th this crack indicates to me there's probably a vertical 2x4 there. And it also feels tighter when I tap on it. I have my drywall saw, which also works great for carving pumpkins. And I put down a drop cloth because I'm going to make a big mess here. And now I'm ready to cut. I'm going to lift up the wire so I don't cut the wire. And the tough part is the plaster here on the surface is really tough but the sheetrock itself is really easy to cut. And I don't want to cut anything outside of where the box is gonna go. But I really don't wanna cut the wire. So I got a cut right along the base of uh, where the bottom of this box is going to go. And this is a nice box that ha actually has screws in it so I can screw it down into the 2x4 without having to get pull off more of the sheetrock to get into the side of it. Now that I can see where I'm going, I've got a pencil and I'm just going to draw along the outside there we go I can see what I'm doing now and just more cutting slow don't try to hurry it and it's the inside of a closet so if I mess things up it's not too big a deal Let's 
I've come to a two by four, so I'm not gonna cut any farther because I can't. All right, so that says this is gonna go up here. If that goes up here, this is gonna go about like that. That was a little messy. Well, now that I have something coming off here, I'm gonna rip some of this out and see what I'm see a little more into that hole. There we go. So now that I have a hole, I can see what's going on. And I see the wire here, and I see this stream of foam that came down from above. That's where the wire actually comes in. And we had some air sealing, and they sprayed foam in every little crack, and apparently it came down and followed the wire. So, if I'm going to put the box there, I'm going to have to be able to get the wire into the box. So, I may have to remove that one staple and some of that foam. That foam just popped off. So, all I've got here is the wire. If I remove that one staple, I can put it into the box. And then, uh, we can have our nice flush mount. Here we see the hole and that one staple. Maybe I can get it off using a screwdriver to wedge it out. Yeah, that just lifts right out. Excellent. Now, just have to make sure that hole is the right size for the box. Get the wire in the box and screw it in place. For a simple test, I'm going to put the wires into the box and just see if it fits in the hole backwards. And it looks like just about, but it needs a very slight bit off that corner here. So I 
using the drywall saw and cut that off and the box now fits. Now I just need to get the cables into the box and screw it into place. All right, I brushed out the dust in there and debris. I like to leave things clean and neat when I can. Now I'm going to take these wire nuts off, having double checked that the light switch is actually off. Now the next step is to push those wires into the box through that little hole in the back, which I will do. All right, I pulled those wires through, and now I'm to the part with the insulation. And, and then I can see, I'm gonna turn that just a little bit so there's no extra bend in the insulation. So the insulation's going through at the right angle. We do need the insulation going into the box, otherwise that is not good. the quality of the video here. This is really hard to do while filming. That's gonna be tight. I'm gonna not show the rest of this. So I gave that a good shove and got the wire in and now I can put the box into place and then I just have to get those screws in. want the box flush with the outside of the drywall there. Perfect. Now the problem is I normally would use a drill but my drill won't be able to reach at that angle so I'm gonna have to use a screwdriver or a ratchet. I think a ratchet is the right tool here. So the trick with the ratchet is it's just slow and once you get the screw started, then the box won't move anymore. And that one's started. Let's get the other one going. As always, if you drop something on a ladder, even a step ladder, let it fall and then pick it up. Don't try to catch it or you might fall with it. This would be easier with better tools. But the angle is getting worse and this is old wood which makes it harder to screw into. That's pretty good. If I can get that one that good, I can get the other one that good. Well, that's as good as I'm going to get that. That one screw didn't go in quite all the way, but I will wrap the grounding wire around that just for safety. As, especially since we don't need the ground for the LED light because everything is plastic. And then we'll put the mounting clips for the light on either side of the bracket, the box, and attach the wires and mount it, and we'll be good. Use needle nose pliers, wrap the ground around that screw. Gets it started. There we go. 
Now this is totally unnecessary, but I want to fill in the various holes and around that box. And I have this spackle that I like using. Uh, it works really well. It's very um, easy to put in and it never cracks. So I'm going to use this. So, here we go. If this dries out, you can just add water to it. It's really good stuff. Uh, a couple of these holes might actually be outside what's covered up because the new light's going to be slightly higher than the old light. Probably be the only one who ever even knows this is here, but it makes me happy. There we go. All good. Now from the back of the light, we have two little clips. I'm gonna pop out. And we just need to get holes drilled for these, get the these mounted on, and then I can attach the light, and we'll be good. We want these a bit to either side of this box, and we want them even with the box, so that we totally cover up the box with the light. That's the plan. This looks about right. Here. That looks about right. That's probably a good idea to make sure these are level. We'll check the bottom holes here to here. circle width of the hole so I can just do that with the drill. I have the screws and drywall mounts that came with the lights. Put those in my pocket. This bit is just a little small for this drywall mount but the next size up is too big so I'll use this one. so slightly higher than the circles. Let's see how I did. Went through the center of the circles and it is perfect. Excellent. The drywall itself is very soft and forgiving but the plaster on the outside is really tough. So I'm going to wiggle this drill bit in, around to make this ever so slightly larger. Should be able to tap the drywall screws in, uh, the drywall screw mounts anyway. And the way these work is that as the screw goes in, it expands them slightly, and makes them even tighter.
my video got cut off where I was actually screwing those in, but it was just driving four screws, very simple, and I got my mounting brackets on. All right, so I'm going to trim this back, the insulation on this back a little bit so I can work better with these wires when I'm attaching them with the, uh, with the wire nuts. This is a little hard to do. This is probably not the best tool for the job. Because I really don't want to cut the wires themselves. I just want to cut the insulation. But I'll get it. Jobs are always much easier if you have the right tool. Ah, once you get a little tear in it, then you can just rip it. There we go. Just that little bit extra is going to make a huge difference. And now I can just clip off this that I don't need. Tidy it up a little bit. Now, the wires themselves should have about the same amount of exposed wire as the wires we're clipping them to, which they don't. I'm going to use my wire trimmer, uh, uh, stripper. And this is going to use the smallest gauge here. Because these are really tiny wires, and I'm going to about double the amount exposed. I'm going to try and get a good cut on the insulation without cutting the wire. And these are not the best strippers, and it's the craziest little tiny wire. Oh, it's tricky. There. Okay. All right, now let's just trim the other wire. Put this in there. It should get a cut on the insulation and not the wire. And then it just slides off. There we go. Now I can attach that with wi the wire nuts and uh, test it. So now that we have all the wires ready, we can attach the wires and then hopefully our light will be ready to mount and we'll have a great new light in here. Let's see. Get the white wire. These are color coded differently. I don't think it matters. tricky. Ah, there we go. Once the wiring nut in place, screw it down tightly. And we're going to do the other one. Very important that the power is off. These are both on tight. Now for the moment of truth. It works! So I can push that back in there. I think we want the wire coming out on this side. Doesn't really matter. trick is get this clipped on there we have a light mission accomplished
Now, in this other closet, I was doing the same thing, but behind the fluorescent tube, it appears there's a structural beam. So there's no space to put in one of those electrical boxes to hide the wires. So I simply remove the ballast and the ends of the fluorescent uh, light fixture so that it's an empty metal box. And then on the surface of it, I drilled a couple of holes on each side to put in the mount and mounted the light directly on the old box. It's actually much easier to do it that way, but I don't like the look of it as well. So this is the other way to do the same project. Uh, it's less work, but not as nice a result.